Good evening. You are watching the news from the Sultanate of Iman television. First, the headlines. As per the royal orders of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Highness Sayyid Fahad bin Mahmoud al Sayyid presides over the royal annual horse race in the Walaya of Sihar, and the horse Mesor wins the race. The Sultanate achieves advanced positions on Arab and global levels in the food security field. And the Sultanate prepares to celebrate the five years of success of including the art of Al Asi in the UNESCO's non materialistic heritage of humanity international list. Those were the headlines. Now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of condolences to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, on the death of Her Royal Highness Princess Mudawi bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. As per the royal orders of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Highness Said Fahad bin Mahmoud al Said, Deputy Prime Minister for the Council of Ministers, presided over the royal annual horse race in the Walaya of Soha today. The race included five rounds. The first round was allocated for pure Arabian horses with women jockeys at 1,200 meters. The second round was also allocated for pure Arabian horses for a distance of 1,200 meters. The third round was for pure Arabian horses at 1,600 meters. The fourth round is dedicated for pure Arabian horses with high ratings during the 2017 to 2018 season at 1,600 meters. The fifth and the final round will have a tough contest as selected pure Arabian horses are competing for His Majesty's Cup. A number of equestrian shows were performed on the sidelines of the race. At the end, His Highness Said Fahad bin Mahmoud al Said, Deputy Prime Minister for the Council of Ministers, handed over His Majesty's Cup and prizes to the winners of the race. The winning horse in the race was Mesor from the Royal Cavalry. مع الحصان دجنت الشوط الثاني الحاصل على المركز الأول روض مع الفارس the Sultanate is in the second position on the Arab level and 28th globally out of 130 countries in the field of food security, it was revealed in the conclusion ceremony of the food security workshops which were held at Sultan Qaboos University. The six-week workshops acquainted participants with the means of aquaculture, agriculture and eliminating threats to natural resources. The workshops were organized by the Self-Learning Center at SQU in order to adopt ideas of Sultan Qaboos University students in the field of food security and turn them into projects. It is worth mentioning that the workshops targeted not only students of the College of Agriculture and Marine Sciences, but also students from other colleges. During the event, Oman Food Investment Holding Company revealed that it is implementing a number of aqua projects in various governorates of the Sultanate to secure the food sector in the Sultanate. The projects include Mazun Dairy Project in the Walaya of Sinina, Al Nama Poultry Project in the Walaya of Ibri, and Al Bashaya Red Meat Project in the Walaya of Salala, along with Pisciculture Project through floated cages in the Walaya of Kuriat. The Sultanate prepares to celebrate the five-year success of listing the art of al Asi in UNESCO's non-materialistic heritage of humanity international list on the 5th of December 2017. The historical researches reveal the existence of an Omani poetry on the art of al Asi that dates back to more than 150 years, which stresses that the Omanis were the first to show their creativity in this art. The art is considered a part of the Omani heritage and it is performed by holding a sword and a shield while reciting poetic phrases about the glory of Oman and its leader. The youth also show their pride in being Omani while performing the art of al -Asi. It is worth mentioning that this art is performed during national celebrations and other activities around the country.
شلف عن كل مهذا Oman Post Company inaugurated an e-shopping service of commodities starting from the United States markets with competitive prices. More details in the following report. Oman Post Company inaugurated e-shopping service of commodities starting from the United States markets with competitive prices. During the inauguration ceremony, a memorable stamp was issued on the occasion of the 47th glorious National Day. Online purchases of commodities will arrive in the Sultanate through various transport means and if the cargo is heavy it will reach by sea. The competitive prices will oblige the existing companies to lower the cost and to provide high quality services to the satisfaction of the customers, whether individuals or institutions. His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Futaisi, Minister of Transport and Communications, stated that the inauguration of this e shopping service called Matjar is considered as a step towards e trade from Oman to the world and vice versa, and they are looking forward to Oman Post's vision in providing modern services. It's worth mentioning that gradually other markets will also be within the reach in a step that will facilitate the exchange of commodities from and to the Sultanate, in addition to its preparations to become a logistics hub on the global level within the framework of new establishments including airports and seaports. In a statement to Oman Radio and Television, Abdul Malik bin Abdul Karim, Chief Executive Officer of Oman Post, said that there are expectations of approving a new strategy for Oman Post in the upcoming December. The inauguration ceremony of the shopping service was presided over by His Excellency the Minister of Transport and Communications. Still to come in our news bulletin. With its beautiful traditional markets, the Matra Soup is fit Souk is visited by tourists and residents throughout the year. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. Iraqi police and hospital officials said a bombing in southeast Baghdad killed 11 people last night. The attack targeted a popular shopping district and left 26 civilians wounded. No group claimed responsibility for the attack, which comes as Iraqi forces are conducting the last military operations against the Daesh group in the country. Daesh has repeatedly claimed responsibility for insurgent-style attacks in Iraq as the extremists have slowly lost territory across the country over the past three years. Last week, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi said Iraq is poised to declare victory against Daesh after the group is driven out of the western desert near the Syrian border. The UN envoy for Syria today hailed a meeting with diplomats from the five permanent Security Council members in Geneva as useful while calling on rival sides in the war-torn country to get down to business in upcoming peace talks. Staffan de Mistura spoke after briefing envoys from world powers about the eighth round of UN-mediated peace talks under his guidance. De Mistura is expected to meet with opposition leaders today and said he expected a delegation from the government of President Bashar Assad to arrive tomorrow. The meeting in Geneva included Breck McGurk, the US envoy for the coalition to defeat the Daesh group, and the French Foreign Ministry's political and security affairs director, Nicolas de Riviere. Russia's ambassador in Geneva, Alexei Borodavkin, said Russia appreciated the opportunity but said he had some doubts about the format of the talks. The world economy is growing faster than it has in seven years and more and more people are working but the high growth isn't expected to last long and wages remain stagnant. That's according to forecasts today from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which urged governments to do more to ensure longer-term growth and better living standards across the board.
The group, which recommends policies for leading economies, predicts sustained growth in the US this year and next and a sharper than expected increase in the countries that use the euro currency. The OECD cautioned that its forecasts are clouded by uncertainty over pre President Donald Trump's tax policies and risks of protectionist trade moves. The long-troubled Eurozone enjoyed another boost as the OECD became the latest group to raise its forecast for the 19-country region. Serbian Prime Minister Anna Bernabek and her Chinese counterpart Li Keqiang met in Budapest today after taking part in the 16 plus 1 summit between China and 16 countries from Central and Eastern Europe. Discussions at the sixth annual summit centred on increasing economic relations between the two sides and the effects on the Eastern European region of China's new Silk Road, which seeks to boost and integrate China's commercial ties with Asia, Europe and Africa. The initiative's most visible project to date is a renovation of the rail line between Budapest and Belgrade, the Serbian capital. The project, estimated to cost 2.9 billion US dollars, is being financed in a large part by China. Bernabic said the project was the most important infrastructure development plan in Serbia and the start of the completion of a comprehensive rail network in Serbia. Romania's Coast Guard today rescued 66 migrants, including dozens of children, aboard a Turkish ship on the Black Sea after the vessel issued a distress signal. A statement said the ship reported engine trouble earlier today as it was being battered by high winds in rough waters some 35 kilometres from the Black Sea coast and asked Romanian authorities and a commercial ship in the area for help. The Coast Guard dispatched two ships to the area and escorted the vessel to the Black Sea port of Constanta. The migrants, comprising 31 men, 11 women and 24 children, are from Iraq, Pakistan and Afghanistan and were trying to illegally enter Romania. The migrants will be placed in refugee centres. Migration to Romania has increased this year as other routes into Europe have closed. Indonesian Mount Ogang volcano today continued to hurl clouds of white and dark grey ash about 3,000 metres above its cone. Its explosions can be heard about 12 kilometres away. Indonesia's Nas National Disaster Mitigation Agency raised the volcano's alert to the highest level yesterday and expanded an exclusion zone to 10 kilometres from the crater in places from the previous 7.5 kilometres. It said a larger eruption is possible, though a top government volcanologist has also said that the volcano could continue for weeks at its current level of activity and not erupt explosively. The authorities said that the local airport's closure for another 24 hours was required for safety reasons. Now for some more local news. Military cooperation between the Sultanate and the United States of America was reviewed by His Excellency Mohammed bin Nasser al Razbi, Secretary General at the Ministry of Defense, and Vice Admiral John C. Aquilino, Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Fifth Fleet, currently visiting the Sultanate. The meeting exchanged cordial conversations and discussed a number of matters of common concern. The meeting was attended by a number of senior officers at the office of the Secretary General at the Ministry of Defense and the military attaché at the U.S. Embassy in Muscat. Lieutenant General Ahmed bin Harith al napani Chief of Staff of the Sultan's Armed Forces, also received in his office today Vice Admiral John C. Aquilino, Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Fifth Fleet. The meeting exchanged viewpoints and discussed a number of matters of common concern between the two friendly countries. Commodore Saeed bin Abdullah al Saudi, Deputy Commander of the Royal Navy of Oman, received Vice Admiral John C. Aquilino, Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Fifth Fleet, who is currently on a visit to the Sultanate.
the Sultanate participates with the Islamic nation to mark the celebration of Prophet Muhammad's birthday, peace be upon him, which falls on the 12th of Rabi al Awal. The ceremony included a number of activities like nasheeds and poems on the appraisal of the Prophet Muhammad and the events that occurred in the Prophet's life. This anniversary is considered a valuable opportunity to reminisce about Prophet Muhammad, the final messenger to struggle to deliver the message of Islam, the early day of Islam and the difficulties he went through to achieve his goals. Muslims all over the globe became partners in the annual Muslim celebrations of this auspicious occasion. The ceremony was presided over by His Excellency Sheikh Khaled bin Omar al Mahoun, Minister of Civil Service. Eight people have died and another was injured in a fire that broke out at a house in Aya Salam neighbourhood in the Walaya of Barka this morning. The Public Authority for Civil Defence and Ambulance said firefighters at the Civil Defence and Ambulance Centre in the Walaya exerted all efforts to extinguish the fire. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. The Capital Market Authority issued a list of regulations to promote and encourage new insurance products in order to increase the document holder's protection. The authority approved the results of the subscription of the offered shares of the National Life and General Insurance Company, which reached around 66.8 million shares. The authority also approved the allocation of shares to the subscribers in the first category by 100% for each subscriber, as well as allocating 99% to the second category. It is worth mentioning that the company offered its shares for general subscription by fully adhering to the requirements of Royal Decree No. 39 over 2014, which indicated that the national insurance companies should change their status to shareholding companies. The Shrimp Aquaculture Project in the Walaya of Bani Buhassan aims to produce 3,600 tonnes of shrimp. During a discussion session, Oman Aquaculture Development Company stated that the project will provide 177 job opportunities till 2020. The project will also create opportunities for small and medium enterprises through activating their roles in various production and promoting stages in the local and international markets. It is worth mentioning that the fisheries world sector receives great attention by the government to be one of the promised sectors in enhancing the economic diversification programme. The request to activate the services of Oman Holding Company for Environment in the Walayas of Haima, Dukum and Jaza topped discussions at the ninth meeting held by the Municipal Council in the Governorate of Awasta. The members discussed the importance of setting up artificial rain stations in the walayas of the Governorate and reviewed the risk of parking trucks in residential areas in places not intended for them. Replies received from the bodies concerned were also reviewed. One of the beautiful traditional markets in the Sultanate is Matra Souk, which is visited by tourists and residents throughout the year. Our reporter Salah bin Khalfa and Arabi visited the souk and made the following report. While in Muscat, visitors stop to add on their itinerary an enchanting market that starts at a gate facing the Sea of Oman and Matrah Cornish. They indulge themselves into the beauty of one of the oldest markets in Oman. It is Matrah Souq. I think it's a very cool place. It uh, has a lot of energy, a lot of movement, and a lot of stuff to, to buy. So, cool. The antiquity of this magnificent traditional souk has increased the extent of its beauty. Matrah Souq is specially characterized by the narrow winding lanes that are roofed with wood. I really enjoy it. It's very nice. Uh, it's, there's a lot of things to see and a lot of smells, a lot of every, all of the experience. When passing through the souk, your senses are tantalized by the aromatic smells of frankincense, perfumes and spices. In addition, shoppers and travelers can find a selection of shops full of silverware products and traditional clothes. Yeah, it's my first time here in the souk. It's beautiful. Um, I've been looking for 
some different things for my family to take back to them to show them what Oman is really about and how beautiful it really is. It is worth mentioning that the market was built from mud and palm leaves to suit high temperatures and harsh climate conditions. Yet, to maintain its popular style, it has been renovated and decorated to make the shopping experience comfortable for tourists as well as ordinary shoppers. Different kinds of jewelry and handicrafts can be obtained from Matrah Souq as souvenirs and gifts. For the Sultanate of Oman Television English News, Saleh Mukhalfan al Rahbi, Masqat Governorate. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear skies will prevail over the Sultanate with chances of low clouds and fog late at night and early morning over the governorates of North Shakia and Buremi. Winds will be northwesterly to northerly, light to moderate. Seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of one metre. This is the Sultanate of Oman television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. As per the royal orders of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Highness Said Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Said presides over the royal annual horse race in the Walaya of Soha and the horse Mazor Rint wins the race. The Sultanate achieves advanced positions on Arab and global levels in the food security field. And the Sultanate prepares to celebrate the five years of success of including the art of Al Asi in the UNESCO's non materialistic heritage of humanity international list. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night. <laughs>